Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can reuse your old CRT TVs, that's these big tube TVs, on modern day equipment. So I've got a little laptop down here, I've got a Blu-ray player and a Nintendo Switch and they all work fine on it. Now the scenario is that you've already got a flat screen TV or a monitor but unfortunately it's broken. You've looked into repairing it and it's just too expensive but you're not too bothered because you've already got your heart set on the latest 4K HDR TV but you haven't quite got the money together yet and you've got to wait another two or three months to save up before you can buy your perfect TV. In the meantime, you can actually reuse your old CRT TV that you might have thrown in the basement or the attic or the garage and that will actually work okay for the next few months until you get your perfect TV. Now obviously resolution's not going to be great. If it's a European TV, a PAL TV with SCART connections, then you're going to be looking at a resolution of approximately 576, but that's not exact, that's just a guesstimate because it doesn't work out exactly like that. And if you're looking at possibly an American TV, which might be an NTSC TV, then you're probably going to be looking at composite connections here and you're going to be looking at a resolution of 480. And although it it isn't great it is actually still workable short term so now when you're watching this video you will find that there's black lines running up and down the screen here like that that doesn't actually happen with my eyes there so if you have a look here when I move the camera up and down you can see there's these shadows going up and down the screen with my eyes that's not visible that must be something to do with the refresh rate anyway let me show you this working and then I'm going to show you the connections on how to do it yourself so if you have a look here, I've got my little GPD pocket connected up to the TV here. So now you'll be able to watch all your favourite YouTube videos, or for example if you wanted to watch Netflix or do whatever you want to do. It's just mirroring whatever you see here up onto the screen up there. And now if I go over to the little HDMI switch here, I can change the input to the next one. This one here is the Blu-ray player. So if I was to just press play here, Better than it looks. you can see now that it actually looks okay and it is more than watchable alright let me just put that on pause and now if I wanted to play the Nintendo Switch again I just go back to the little HDMI selector switch down here go on to there and now if I pick up my Joy-Con Yeah, you can see that it is all actually very playable. Of course, you're not going to get the resolution you're going to get from a 720p or a 1080p or a 4K TV or monitor. But yet, it was still more than playable. And there's something nice about having the CRT TVs with the glass screen. They just feel nice, the colours look nice and stuff. Now, let me show you the setup because it is actually quite straightforward. All we need to do is, normally you would plug in, for example, your Blu-ray player via HDMI straight into the TV. But now, obviously, this TV has not got HDMI, but it has got a SCART connection. So if we have a look around the back of it, you can see here these old-fashioned connectors here. These are European connectors, which is a SCART connection here. And what we need is, we need a HDMI to SCART connector here. So if you have a look here, you can see it's just the input is HDMI this side and then the output is this SCART connector here. Now obviously this is only going to work if your TV has a SCART connector. If it doesn't, I'm going to show you the composite one in a little while. We also have a little switch here that goes from PAL to NTSC. I'm just going to put it to PAL because this TV is a PAL. So if you were just connecting up one lot of equipment, for example, if you just wanted your Nintendo Switch connected up, you would bring the HDMI out of it, you would put it into the input here, and then the output would be the SCART lead going to the TV. But in this instance, I want to connect up numerous equipment like you would do on a normal TV because a normal TV you might have two or three HDMI inputs in which case then we need this little HDMI selector switch here and this is really very simple all it is is if you have a look you will have various inputs and only one output so what happens is the HDMI from the Blu-ray player goes into one of the inputs in this instance it goes to input number two doesn't matter which one the switch goes to another input it goes to input number three my little GPD laptop over there goes to 
HDMI number one. I now have the option to plug in another two HDMIs, input four and input five. And then the output of this switch goes to the input of this HDMI to SCART converter. So then, whatever we press the button to go on to, all it's doing is swapping the cables, for example, from input one to the output, from input two to the output, to input three to the output, to four to the output, to five to the output. So right now we're on number one, is the little laptop, number two will be the Blu-ray player, and number three will be the Nintendo Switch. So it's nice and easy. You can also get a little IR remote control with this as well. So you can sit back, put the IR emitter on here, and then you can sit back, use the remote control to change between the inputs if you want it to hide it all away. Now this HDMI to SCART converter does need power. It needs five volts DC, which is the same as a USB port. So all you've got to do is find a USB port. Now that's fine if you're connecting up to the Nintendo Switch because you can just use one of the USB ports at the side or the back. Or if you're using your little laptop, you can plug it in and get power from there. But if you want it powered all the time, so for example, in this setup here, I want it so that it doesn't matter what piece of equipment is on, I need that converter to be live all the time. In which case then, all I do is I plug it in to a little USB power supply here. So you know, like a mobile phone charger, and then I just use the input from that to give it five volts. So as you can see, it's actually very simple to do. Now, let me just show you the composite one, because again, it's exactly the same principle. Right, so we've got our composite leads here, which are the yellow, white, and red leads. And I'm just gonna plug them into the TV here on this TV. The composite is at the front. And then the other side of that, I'm plugging in to this little converter here. So this converter, let me just show you this, is basically a HDMI to AV converter. So you've got HDMI input, and then you've got the output as the composite. And again, we need to power it via USB. There's a little thing there saying USB power. So again, I'm just gonna plug it into the same USB charger that was powering the SCART connector. So let's connect this up. So that's there. Right, so I'm gonna take the HDMI out of this SCART connector here because now this is no longer gonna be in use and I'm gonna just plug it into here. So it's exactly the same thing again. We've got the output from the switch. So we've got all the inputs from the equipment going into here. We've got the output from the HDMI switch going to the input of this converter. So it's basically all digital, 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 and then this converts it to analog onto the composite cable, which goes into the front of the TV. Now we do have to give this power, so let's plug it into the same power supply as before. Right, so we're all done now, we're all connected up. All we need to do is change the input on the TV because we're currently looking at the SCAR input. We now need to go to AV3 because that's where we've plugged in our composite leads. So we get our remote control, we're on AV1 at the moment, we're just gonna change that to AV3. And there we go. You can now see Mario Kart again. And although the SCART picture is better, the composite picture, there's very little in the difference. Unless they were side by side, you probably wouldn't really notice. Right, and now let's have a look at the laptop. So I've changed the input to number one over there. And again now, you can see here that I've got my YouTube videos there. Now, when it comes to Windows 10, it doesn't look great on here because it is very hard to see the writing because it is so scaled down because it's designed for 720 and above screens. So when you put it onto a CRT TV, it's hard to read the writing. But again, it's fine for things like YouTube videos and Netflix, but you, you wouldn't want to be typing out any kind of word processing thing here because you're not going to be able to spot mistakes and stuff easy. Lastly, we have a look at the Blu-ray. Yeah, and you can see it does look good. This may be the baby in Ferrari's range. So as you can see, it actually works okay, and the picture is not as bad as you would think. You do get used to it. So money-wise, you're going to be looking at around about 15 UK pounds, so about 20 US dollars, if you're going to be getting the HDMI to composites converter and the HDMI switch. 
And if you're looking at the HDMI to SCART converter and the HDMI switch, you're probably going to be looking at about 20 UK pounds, of roughly around 25 US dollars. You can get them a lot cheaper if you want to get them shipped direct from China, and you can probably actually half those prices. They're very cheap components. They're not high quality but they do the job, especially short term. I'm not recommending you do this long term. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.